And it's a great pleasure to be here uh, in front of all of you and in front of this distinguished group of folks. I think I get the sense of why I was invited. Uh, uh, you've got Army, Navy, and Air, and Air Force. I'm the Navy uh, opening speaker, so uh, we're part of a brotherhood and a group of a family, if you will, that goes a lot further beyond what our uniforms show. Uh, we have a rivalry, uh, inter-service rivalry, that's important for us, but it's a rivalry that stops uh, uh, once we band together and, and move across and do the mission that our country has asked us to do. Uh, I'm dep really, truly honored to have an opportunity. This is the second chance I've had to talk to this group and to honor our veterans. And as you know, the department's been holding these ceremonies, it's been mentioned previously, for 10 years. Uh, that goes to the determination uh, of the folks up here, Mr. Morrison, Mr. Rogers, who represent the veterans of the Department of Energy. Uh, I've had the pleasure of serving for nine years on active duty and 20 years or so in the reserves in the Navy. And, uh, and I've had the blessed honor of being able to lead an organization that's primarily a national security organization within this department. And I'll talk about that in a little bit here. But uh, we've got about 30% of the NNSA's workforce, and it's probably equally so you know, the rest of the department that are veterans. Uh, all of us know, know veterans. Either we are one, our mother or father was a veteran, our spouse, brother or sister, colleague, co-workers, what have you. You all work with veterans every day. And you don't have to spend too much time in this building to see folks in uniform working. Large part of those folks are in defense programs taking care of our nuclear deterrent. But they are part and they're ingrained in this department. So it's, this is a very special day for each and every one of us. And it's a day that we set aside to thank all of those who have served so honorably in the military, whether it's in a time of war or in a time of peace. And in specifically, this day was established to thank those people in uniform and those people that have worn the uniform for what they've done. It's particularly poignant this year in a time when we're involved in two conflicts, major conflicts, wars around the world and particularly after the tragic event at Fort Hood not just two weeks ago, that these veterans need our support now more than ever before. Whether or not you've worn a uniform or not, you know you all have something that you can do to thank a veteran. And literally, when you see somebody, you thank them. It's quite simple. Uh, it doesn't sound like much, but it really means a lot to folks. Under Secretary Johnson this morning, uh, reminded us, Christina Johnson this morning reminded us, of one of our guard members, uh, this is his last day on the seventh floor taking care of us. He's going to go off to Afghanistan to help train military officers and servicemen and women to take care of improvised uh, explosive devices, how to defuse these IEDs. So he's decided, he's, he served in the Marine Corps, he served here at the Department of Energy, and he wants to get back out there. And it goes back to the point there isn't one person that's been out there that hasn't said, I'm going to answer the call and say yes. So few people understand the real true meaning of service and sacrifice that most men and women who have volunteered answer the question to, to our nation's service. All times of the day or night, uh, every day of the year, they are there. When we get up in the morning after a good night's sleep, somewhere out in the world a sailor is getting off a mid-shift after watch tired and bleary-eyed after doing his or her job for a number of hours. They're out there. Whether you're in the cafeteria eating lunch up here or somewhere in the world, there's a young Marine, probably not more than 20 years old, who is out there standing guard duty, whether it's in an embassy post or in an outpost somewhere. When we uh, kick back on Saturday afternoon to watch our favorite college football team play, at that particular moment, there may be a reservist out there that is opening up the mail and uh, receiving a letter from the nation asking him or her to come back and serve. This happens. When we go to bed at night in the comfort of our own homes, somewhere out in the world there's an army lieutenant probably consoling his or her own troops, trying to explain why their colleague, their co-worker, their brother, their sister died that day, and why that fallen friend would have wanted them to press on with the important work the bigger work that's at hand. And that's the spirit of service and sacrifice that makes the armed forces, our armed forces, one of the greatest in the world. 
and why our veterans are so critical to our mission. The veterans serving in the department today continue to live that legacy. They continue to serve their, their country, and they continue to do so with pride and with honor. In the NNSA, they are serving their country by implementing President Obama's unprecedented nuclear security agenda. That means keeping the American people safe by maintaining the safety, the security, and the reliability of our nation's deterrent without nuclear testing. It means traveling around the world to keep nuclear material out of the hands of terrorists. And it means working day and night to leverage our expertise to make sure that our nation's best experts on nuclear counterterrorism, nuclear forensics, nuclear intelligence analysis are out there contributing to the overall picture. Each and every day, the men and women working here at headquarters, at Germantown, and out in the field are part of a greater enterprise, our, our nuclear security enterprise, that we're so proud of here in the Department of Energy. For decades, the deterrent has been the cor cornerstone of our nation's security strategy, and one that the department here has a proud legacy, a history of maintaining. But the NNSA also provides the science and technology to address the full spectrum threats to our national security. For example, we work with the Department of Defense on military capabilities and technologies that help provide better body armor for our troops or help train them to detect and defuse improvised explosive devices on the battlefield. NNSA is intertwined with the Department of Defense and other federal agencies and making sure that our national security is second to none. Of course, NNSA is not the only part of the department that is working national security. I've worked in the national security policy arena long enough to know that the threats we face are all interconnected. Protecting our national security means also protecting our economic security and our energy security. That means taking important steps to promote economic prosperity and leave a healthier planet for future generations. And leaving a healthy planet is national security. At the Department of Energy, we are working to make, maintain clean energy profitable so that we can drive investments in wind and solar power and to promote the next generation of benefits and technologies. We're working to spark American innovation in fuel-efficient automobiles and the development of advanced batteries for electric vehicles. We're offering incentives to restart our nuclear power industry and encourage utilities to invest in carbon capture and storage from coal-fired plants. Under the Secretary's leadership, we are also working to reinvigorate the great American research and innovation engine that will lead to better and cheaper energy solutions. We are playing a critical role in providing the nation tools to understand and tackle global climate change issues. For example, we've built some of the most powerful supercomputers in the world. These supercomputers were originally built to take care of our stockpile without underground testing, but now they're being shifted over into addressing some of these complex issues that I've just mentioned. And these are examples of our nation's investments in nuclear security over the last 60 years that have helped provide solution to other critical challenges. There are also examples of ways we are creating new jobs and new green energy economy right here at home. And more importantly, there are examples of what is possible if we as Americans work together in addressing these challenges before us. We are a nation built on commitment to service to one another and to our communities and nobody understands this better than our veterans. As veterans, your service did not stop when you took off your uniform. Every day, each of you comes to work here at the department and you continue to serve your country. I couldn't be more proud of the work we do here or having the honor of being able to work with each and every one of you. So today is really your day to hear the heartfelt words and thanks of a grateful nation and to say thank you for your love of country and for protecting our freedom. I'm proud to be one of your own. I salute you for all that you have done. May God bless you for all your sacrifice. And thank you again very, very much for the honor of speaking. Thank you, Joe.